Hi folks, welcome to the video. My name's Colin, call sign MM0OPX. And in this video, I want to talk to you about a new battery that I've just purchased to use with my ICOM IC705. Now, I've had the IC705 for well over a year now, and um, I've either been using it hooked up to just my mains uh, power supply, either in the shack, or just using the uh, the, um, the BP272, you know, the standard battery that comes with it. I think it's about 1800 milliamp hours, something like that, which, which allows you to work with uh, 5 watts. Now, I'm going to be going on holiday soon, or in the summer anyway, a few months away, so I wanted to prepare a little go kit. So I, I needed some uh, extra batteries uh, some uh, to operate for a bit longer than I think uh, <clears throat> what the uh, the built-in battery will give me. So one option was to buy some uh, a BP three a BP three hundred seven and uh, the larger capacity Icon battery. Those are about ninety pounds. Um, but there there was actually quite a few. Um, I'm not going to call them counterfeits or copies, but let's just call them clones. And and these had actually been a, a extensively uh, reviewed and tested and got some really quite good reviews. And they were around about forty pounds uh, for these batteries. And I actually considered buying two of those. Um, having ten watts is not the be all and end all for me. 5 watts, if you're working QRP and you're working 5 watts and you're running CW, that's absolutely, it's more than enough. But I was actually struggling to get some of those batteries. Um, so instead of going for that, what I actually went for was a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, a bit of a minefield um, when you're looking at these, certainly if you've not looked at them before. Um, I've never had one, any of this technology before. Uh, which meant I actually had to buy the specific charger as well. Um, so I had to think about that. Um, the, the most common one is on eBay, which is a Miadi uh, battery. It's it, it's quite common and probably the cheapest that's around. I think it's a 7.2 amp hour. Obviously, it depends what capacity you need. Obviously, I, I've went for the 7 amp hour, um, which I reckon, um, doing some rough calculations, is going to give me... Um, four, five, six hours of just, you know, casual um, operating, you know, um, and that sort of 50% receive, 50% transmit. But I'm doing, you know, in real, in real terms, I'm doing a lot more receiving or listening than I'm doing transmitting. So, so it's going to give me a good battery life. Um, and with this battery as well that I purchased, it also comes with the charger, um, which was a bonus. Um, now, I bought this on eBay. I bought this through a recommendation I've seen on Twitter. A few people were buying these, so I thought I would uh, take the plunge and just go with that. Um, it cost me just over £55. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, in the description below. Um, uh, Ultramax, it seems to be a brand that um, only seems to be in the UK. It's certainly ultramax.co.uk, so, so there we are. Um, so yeah, um, I've, I've looked on YouTube to try and find some um, people giving reviews on these batteries, but there doesn't seem to be many about. Um, I found one channel, I think his channel's called The DC Guy, and he sounds Scottish anyway, so I think he's still in Scotland, and uh, he had done a teardown of a, of a bigger battery, a bigger Ultramax battery, but certainly I've not seen any videos on the, the 7 amp power, hence me doing this video. So it's not going to be a, a, a full-blown video with me going out in the field and uh, putting it through its paces. Just want to give an overview, um, show, you, show, you, show you me uh, unboxing the uh, battery, um, how I'm going to connect up to the terminals, um, uh, the voltage uh, when it's out the box, the voltage once it's charged, and the voltage once it's it's under load, and then uh, yeah, I'll probably I'll maybe give a follow up uh, in someone's time um, after after I've used the battery for a bit. Okay, let's get started. So let's take a little look inside this. Just received it today. Looks like it's been reasonably packed well. So that's the charger. Actually have a little look at that. Okay, crocodile clips. UK three pin plug. Kind of stereo plug, can't remember what that is, a mini kettle plug. Used to get them in your kettle blasters. And that's the charger. And here's the battery. Wow, that just 
doesn't feel like you'd expect it to feel. Got a little instruction manual with it. Wow. Yeah. It's hard to describe if you if you've never had one of these before, and this is a first for me. Um it just when you look at it, it just doesn't feel it it looks heavier than what it actually is. Um yeah, so anyway, I'll put a I'll give this a little measure here. So what is that? 150. So sorry, this is metric only. So six inch. See. Um. 90, 92 high. So it's not quite four inch. And 60. So two 60, 64 mil, something like that. 60, some yeah. So what's that? Two, two and a half inch, something like that. But yeah, that just does not feel like you think it would feel. Um, it just feels far too light. If I'm being perfectly honest, um, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of these batteries, and um, twelve volt, five amp power, and I just use them for um, powering, you know, the odd bits and pieces. But this is much, much lighter than this. And you can see the size, size difference. Um, I think what we'll do is I'll get the multimeter, and while it's just outside, it's straight out of the box, we'll see what voltage it's, it's measuring. Yeah, before we do, we check that. Let's just check this SLA battery. See what's in this. I charged these not so long ago, so that's about right. 12 point, just under 12.7 Right, now Let's take the terminals off of this I wish these were screw terminals, but you don't get that until you buy the bigger variants Right, now, I'll turn it this way actually There you go, right out the, straight out the box 13.18 volts Right, I think what I'll do is I'll actually go and get a set of scales and we'll, um, yeah, we'll weigh it. Now, this is just a cheap kitchen scale, so um, I can't really vouch for the accuracy. I don't have any, any standards here, something that I know the weight of, but well, let's just say that it's, it's going to be good enough for what we have. So let's go and see if it's actually going to measure this. So this is one of our 5 amp hour uh, uh, sealed lead acid batteries. Let's just see if it's, I'm not even sure if it would weigh this. There you go. 1.7 kilos or three and a bit pound, three pound, 12.3 ounce. And then let's put the SLA on it, the uh, Life Pro 4 on it. Wow, 817 grams, one pound, 12.8 ounce. No, I'm not surprised at that. Really, really light, and you know, if you really if you're putting that in your backpack, it wouldn't be bad to carry that at all. Really, um, really quite impressed. Now I've heard that these are actually really um, quick to charge up. They charge up in just over an hour. Um, so I think what we'll do is I'll charge it, and then once it's charged, I'll see what the the kind of maximum voltage is. So let's get this hooked up for the first time. Let's see what it's going to show us. Okay, so we've got, it's hard to see, but there is a red light there. You see that? And what we'll do is we'll leave that for a bit and we'll actually see how long um, that actually takes to charge. So it's a few days later now. Um, I've actually had this battery on charge. Um, just when I got it, so it charged for about um, an hour, get just over an hour, and the indicator on the charger went from red to green. So then I guess it's charged. 
So now it's, as I said, it's sat for a few days and now we're going to check the voltage now that it's fully charged, or it's saying that it's fully charged. So there we go. 13.35, 13.36 volts. So I don't think that's too bad. Um, but I do want to connect the radio uh, up to it to see what it's going to be drawing um, uh, when under load uh, with the 705. Now, you can see that it's obviously got these little spade terminals. Well, I don't like those. The charger came with crocodile clips, but I've since replaced that. So I've now taken off the crocodile clips and I've fitted um, power poles. And I've used uh, the glue lined heat shrink to stop it coming off. This stuff goes really hard. Um, so that, that cable is not coming out of there. And I've made a little fly lead. This is um, silicon wire, so it's very flexible. And again, I put a power pole on the end of it. Um, so what I'll actually do is I, I can actually just connect that to terminal to terminal. So there we are. So there's our battery. So now we don't need, ever need to touch the terminal side. We can just, as I say, plug in the charger um, or plug in whatever device we want to use. Now, I will insulate these with tape going round about it, but I don't want to do that just yet. I now want to get the radio under load and um, see what voltage it is uh, when it's drawn some current. Right, so what I want to do here is I want to connect up my ICOM IC705. Um, that's currently running on the, that's currently the internal battery. Um, but I've got a dummy load here, so I can use it for transmitting without damage. It's not connecting that to an antenna. This will, uh, this will handle 35 watts continuous, so this is more than ample for the radio. So we'll connect that up. So that's that connected. I can just sit down there. Don't need any um, white noise from the radio. Now, take the mic out here. Should get the power cable. Now this power cable is already fitted with power pole connector. So what we'll do is we'll connect that onto here. There we go, and we can see that it's connected because the battery in it's starting to charge. All right, so there's our battery. Now, I could really do an extra pair of hands for doing this. We're connected, and the radio is just on RX, just on receive, sorry. So let's, let's turn the radio on and off. Try and hold these with one hand. I'll we'll use my pinky here. So I'm turning the radio off. But of course, it's actually still charging, so it's still taking some load. Now, um, we're going to a dummy load, so it doesn't really matter what mode or where I am. Power, 100%. So this should be 10 watts if I key the mic here. It's unit. See this little light here, this is a transmit light here. And what's important is our SWR is at zero, which means our dummy load's working correctly. So let's see. When I key up the mic, what happens to the voltage? So 13.6. 12 point, there you go. What's it stabilising it? 12.9, 12.87. That's pretty good. It's going down a little bit, isn't it? So there's back off again, 13.08. Keying the mic again, under load. Point eight four, and again under load. I 
Again, I don't know how accurate this multimeter is. Yep. No, I'm pretty pleased with that. Right, though, for some, some reason unbeknown to me, someone will know why. So when I try and check how much current has actually been drawn uh, by the radio, it actually turns off the charging uh, on the radio, so I don't actually get a reading. So, hey-ho. Um, it's not too important. I think it's about 3 amps. I think that's what it takes. I don't have an inline meter. I need to get one of those, but I believe on uh, transmit on full power, it's about, um, it's about 3 amps. As I said earlier, folks, um, I just wanted to secure this fly lead and actually cover up these terminals so there was no chance of um, shorting. So what I'm going to do is, is just basically cover it with insulin tape like so. Now I believe from the specs that this battery is only rated to um, 10 amps continuous draw. Um, so if you wanted to use it short term on say a 100 watt radio or something with higher load, it wouldn't really be suited by that, it maybe needs 20 amps. Um, but certainly the bigger batteries, I know that the 22 amp power, I think you could draw continu continuously at um, uh, 25 amps, which would be more than ample for the um, for the big radio. So that's our battery now secured, so you can see that we move that it's not going to put any strain on the terminals, which is which is a critical thing. That's what we need to watch. So now I actually want to put this into uh, into my bag. So this is my um, my go bag that I'm currently compiling, putting together um, before I actually take on my holidays this year. So what I've done is I've used the um, these inserts that are supplied with the bag. Um, I'm going to fit the battery in here like so. Now the fly, flying lead can come out to here. Like that. Um, and then they come with these little Velcro straps. Like that. And then... That doesn't need to go right in, to be, to be fair. So there you are. Um, so that's how... That, that's, certainly, that's certainly one way of doing it. And I actually have a little a little extension cable. I'll uh, I'll just go and show you that. Okay, so not not um not exactly what I thought I had. And um, this is a little power cable I, I made for another project. But again, this is um this is silicon wire. Um again, very very flexible. You can see it's quite thin. I think this is about twenty gauge. Um, but for you know the the low current uh, draw that I'm going to be um requiring is more than enough. So what I can actually do is. Um, I think I'll actually make another one of these cables up, just a very short one. So this will connect to the flying lead and I can just have it loose in here. Um, and I can even perhaps have the radio inside the bag and just have the cable coming out. So it certainly gives me lots of options. Well, there you go. That's first impressions of the Ultramax 7 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, only time will tell uh, if it's going to turn out to be any good. Um, I have no reason to think that it won't. Um, there's quite a lot of these being used um, in the UK, especially on amateur radio. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out and using it and giving me some uh, considerable runtime on the, uh, the ICOM 705. Now, um, would I recommend this battery, um, knowing what I know already? Uh, yes, but with the caveat, um, if you don't already have a charger, I would say buy the battery because it saves you having to buy a separate charger and that could be a bit of a minefield. Um, but if you already have a charger that's suitable for Ray uh, Life Pole 4, then I would say buy the Miadi uh, from Amazon. I think it's about £25, £26, pounds, something like that. It's a 7.5 amp hour battery. So I would I would just go for that. Um, and if I need to actually go for one of these, um, another battery of the similar size, I'm probably just going to go with uh, the Miadi to power um, other bits and pieces. Um, if I ever go down the route of operating a 100 watt uh, radio, I'll probably go the route of buying the Ultramax 22 amp hour. Um, uh, that will allow um, a continuous draw of 20 amps, I believe, or 25 amps, which is more than enough for a 100 uh, watt radio. And I'll allow more on a surge anyway, so that's what I would probably do. Um, so yeah, so, you know, if you're thinking about it, I would, you know, I would take the plunge and buy one. Okay, folks, that's it. 73, all the best. And we'll catch you in the next video.